So I'm going to Dominique Robinson and find out at East Oakland, California. I know you fought a lot of good people, but the other people I fought fought a lot of good people too, so he hasn't fought me, so I'm not really concerned with that. Probably what I'm not sure with everybody, me trying to take their head off and them trying to hold me, and me trying to take their head off again and them still trying to hold me until eventually, hopefully, I take his head off. It's more, I guess, of a, of a spiritual journey for me because I look at every opponent as adversity, and you know, life is full of adversity, so people usually run a falter to it, but in a setting like this, the person symbolizes adversity and you can't run. So you're forced to face the adversity and you either falter to it and fold or you beat the person and that symbolizes, you know, overcoming adversity and you grow as a person that way. So I guess I'm looking for something through all of this, but I'm not quite sure what it is. So every fight brings me closer. Carlo Prater from Brasilia, Brazil. I'm just gonna take it to him from the get go. I believe I'm, you know, a better fighter in all aspects and more experienced. So I gotta just jump on him from the start. Pound for pound, me winning, that's whatever it takes, you know. Fight for straps. Uh, much less for cash, but more for straps. So uh, that 155 title, that's, that's my main motivation for this fight, for sure. I'll tell you what, Carlo Prater is a worldly experienced veteran of MMA. Um, he does have a victory over Carlos Condit as a welterweight. Now coming to this fight at 155. He has a very formidable. Like you said, he fights for uh, straps, not cash. He's looking to come. Wow, I mean, his hands are going to be good now. Of course, Carlos Conde is a veteran of Marcelo Ferrancho, the Ultimate Warrior Challenge. Bringing all kinds of experience, also a WEC veteran as well. Now he's taking on none other than Dominique Robinson, known as a fallen angel. And Dominique, I believe, also, I believe he was fighting a 170 before as well. So these are both some big, big lightweights. Yep, I saw Dominic before the fight. He was having a little trouble cutting weight. He's a, he's a big guy. Uh, I don't know if he fought at 170. He's definitely a big, strong guy, formidable opponent. Uh, great challenge here for Carlo Prater. He's a guy out of Oakland, California. Tough, tough town to grow up in, you know, especially the area where he came up. And here's a guy who's been fighting all of his life. Now he said, hey, you know, I want to make some money if I'm going to be a fighter. And uh, he's been very successful. We've seen him here at PFC before. A guy who has some great kicking ability. I like his kicks a lot, and I think he'll try to establish that. And he's got good hand speed as well. Yes. It is a typo on the screen. This is actually a lightweight championship fight, not a welterweight. 155 pounds this fight will be contested at. And I'm very, very interested in seeing Carla Prater compete at 155. And Carla Prater, I mean, both these fighters, I should say, are you know, ripped as could be, you know, probably 4% or less body fat which is, you know, that you're getting the borderline to an unhealthy body fat percentage. Ladies and gentlemen, this town is made possible by Giant Chevrolet Cadillac of Visalia, home of the 559 Customs, as we present 
five three-minute rounds for the vacant BFC World Lightweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. Standing at six feet even, he weighed in at 154.4 pounds. He is a freestyle fighter with a record of 23 wins, six losses and one draw, with three knockouts and 13 submissions to his credit. Joy Carlo Neo Prater. His opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corner in this vacant world championship wrong. attraction. Standing at five feet nine inches, he weighed in at 100. Sometimes the little facets are what, what make the yep. game so interesting, you know? Rep did the good thing, stood it up in the middle of the ring there. One thing about Freda, he's really upright. Yeah, his boxing stance is very upright. But his elbows are tight, hands are up. He has great boxing stance, I believe, in my opinion. Prater's, like I said, a seasoned, worldly veteran of this game. Fought all over the world. And at 155, uh, I look for him to be very impressive. And like, and then likewise, for Dominic Robinson, you know, to, to come away with a victory here, which he certainly could, um, is a very... Uh, His stock would rise uh, tremendously. I mean, yeah. he's had some success here in the PFC, but he's definitely stepped up his level of competition. Fighters having a little conversation about those shots to the back of the head. guys not giving a lot of action it's early in the first round again I, I'm not happy with Robinson's positioning this is not a place where he needs to be trying to work well I feel. this is Pr Pr Prater's 31st professional fight I believe so like I said I mean he's in no hurry he knows he has five rounds he can control the positioning of the round and, and win um, he's a veteran he, and he fights like a veteran he's very smart very smart very calm as well you can tell he's very composed in there does have a cut Both men taking advantage of being stood up in the middle of the ring there. Nice first round, good filling out process by both these impressive fighters, Dominique the Fallen Angel Robinson and Carlo Prater. Round was pretty even. I mean, uh, Prater controlled a little bit in the clinch as far as having him in the corner. On the feet here, they exchanged about the same amount of punches as well. Hard round to score. Nice like double jab there. Yep. 
But like we said, guys, we got five more rounds in this championship fight, our second championship fight of the evening, but not our last. Second of five rounds starting right now, once again, for the PFC Lightweight Championship. Good head movement by Prater, and you know, he checks the kicks very well. Takes one and gives one back. Well, he checked it, the kick that Dominic threw. I don't think Dominic checked uh, the, the kick back, though. Well, that's why I think where Dominic can be more effective. You can see he was throwing punches, throwing combinations, not really landing, but. You know, Prater has, a, has an odd style of boxing. He's very composed, but it's a little unorthodox. Just in the way he moves his head, it almost, it'd almost it be sort of confusing to me. You see, I mean, he does a good job. He keeps his shoulders moving, the head moving, but it just, the tempo is, is strange to me. Is it to you? It definitely looks like he's looking for precision, you know? Throwing one shot, good defense, I mean. That's, a, you know, that's the biggest shot of the fight there so far for yeah. Dominic Robinson landing that right hand. And the biggest kick he's landed. Dominic Robinson has showed me in the past that he can take a punch. <laughs> Dominic Robinson has a coach that is speaking English, but I still have no idea what he's saying. I don't know if you can hear him, guys. Yes, he went to the James Brown School of Yelling. <laughs> Zabaduda! <laughs> God, I love James Brown. It's one of my favorite music to listen to in the training room, by the way. Oh, nice. You know, Prater went for that hook to the body. Fallen Angel backed out, and he came back with the return the favor of that left hook to the body and followed the right kick, low kick. Great combination by Dominic Robinson. Yeah, he throws good hand to, uh, to kick combinations, and I think that is really something special that a lot of fighters nice don't kick. do. He's going a lot to the body, a lot of his combination to the body. Yeah. Good combo there by Prater as well. Yeah, both these fighters are now scoring here in the second round. Good kick there. Robinson's going to the body with that right. I wonder if he's looking to set up a big one over the top. Prater's looking for that kick. He's pawing that, that left hand out there. He wants to follow the big right kick, either to the leg or higher. You can tell he's thinking the kick. Watch Prater. Huh? Dominic Robinson closed the distance there. Back in that familiar corner. We've they seen this movie. And you know what's good is um, for Prater, he brings his opponent to his corner, you notice. Know yep. Another, and, and it's just another facet of being a veteran yep. of the game. Like you said, those little small things that count, he brings, it, uh, brings him all the way. Uh, definitely can hear his corner demands. Nice flurry at the end from the fallen angel. Two rounds under our belt. I mean, how do you guys see? I got this fight score. It's a very competitive fight. Uh, I think either round could have gone to either person. It's yeah, a very, fight. very even fight thus far. Neither fighter standing out from the other as far as dominating the fight. Look at some replays right here. Good left hook to the body, followed by the right kick. And Prater was turned, so he took it on the hamstring, which is much more painful than if he took it on the front of his leg of the quad. So once again, we got some great action going on here. PFC 13 validation, our main event. Doug, the Rhino Marshall taking on El Kukui, Jamie Jahara, and I'll tell you what, that's gonna be a great matchup, but we got two great ones in there right now. The Fallen Angel taking on the new lightweight, Carlos Prater, and these guys are battling it out for the championship. Starting to open up, seeing some big punches. Back to the action here, third round. Good body shot there by the Fallen Angel. Third and pivotal round. I think you're going to definitely see the guys uh, loosen up a little. You can see they've uh, gotten a little looser as the rounds have gone on. And, uh, and you know, I'm seeing some great body work by the Fallen Angel. 
And if you are a fan of boxing, um, you'll know that uh, you know it's it's almost like a stereotype, but it's always the black fighters who don't do the put in the body work. It's always known that the like the me Mexican fighters always look to put in the body work when they fight the black fighters. So it's interesting to see him doing all the body work. Yeah, you know, break away from the stereotypes. Yeah. You, you want to do that. If, <laughs> Uh, but again, this is MMA. You have other things that you can rely on. Do you think he puts mayonnaise on his hamburger too? I don't think you've gone. You've gone too far. No. <laughs> you've gone too far. <laughs> He's from Oakland. They don't even sell mayonnaise there. What are you talking about? <laughs> Now Prater looking to, you know, great, goes straight from that takedown in the mount. Look at the way he's passing. Now this could go one of two ways, very different ways. Angel could get up or Prater could end up in the mount. Robinson's doing the right thing and trying to get back up to his feet. He doesn't want to stay on the ground too long and he did a great job there. Now Prater though pressing, you know, you know, he is the offensive one here. He's the one using the aggressiveness, pushing his opponent into the corner, you know, and the judges have to be considering that. But Angel, like I said, I'm really impressed by his body work early in this round. When they get up there and box, um, I think uh, Fallen Angel's definitely getting the better of the exchanges. Licking Chris on his hands and um, the veteran trader uh, putting a stop to it by putting him in the corner, clinching him, as you saw the takedown earlier as well. Prater has both underhooks. Will he be able to use it? Robinson showing his toughness and his strength. But he seems to just be going corner to corner now. He needs to try to put something together in this last few seconds. Nice takedown. Good trip. You know, and it, once again, it's the little things that matter. <laughs> once again, the fighters stopping and restarting their own fight for the second time. Well, we complained about a poke in the eye, and it, might have been, it was definitely unintentional. And they just froze for a second, acknowledged it, and he said, okay, I can see now. Let's continue to fight. Yeah, both classy guys. I might have poked him in the other eye. That's why I fight dirty. Oh, Carlos thinking about that knee. He thought about his days in Brazil as a Valley yeah. Tito fighter. His eyes lit up. But that is against the rules here at the PFC. You cannot knee a downed opponent. Also cannot kick a downed opponent in the head. You can't kick him in the body. If you time the knee as he's getting up, can you get away with it then? Big cut on top of the head of uh, Dominic. <laughs> Unless that's the blood of Carlos Prater on him. Huh. No, that's a cut. Huge cut on top of the head from an elbow, I would have to imagine. Let's take a look at the replay right here. Is this the takedown? Watch the trip. Nice. Sucking that leg out. Low double leg there and using the trip yeah. as well. Yep. Once again against the ropes where uh, Fallen Angel doesn't have the room to to spread out and sprawl back uh, since the ropes are there. Pulls his legs out, gets the takedown, scores some points there. And Andre, if you notice, the, the uh, doctor did come over to take a look at the cut on Dominic Robinson. And on top of the head, I mean, as far as blood rolling into the eye, it seems as though it was going down this back. Well, a cut up there, it, it, the blood won't go in your eye, but it, you will lose a lot of blood. So, I mean, it's good on one end. You're not getting in your eyes, but you are losing a lot of blood. Fourth of five rounds here. Nice hook into the kick. And Carlo Prater, you know, you know, both these guys are doing the same thing. They'll receive a certain type of punch or kick and they'll immediately throw the same strike back. Trying to top each other. Yeah. Like I can do a two type of deal. Yep. Anything you can do, I can do better. Kudos to that. <laughs> Kudos. <laughs> See nice. Dominic Robinson try to Anderson Silva-esque uh, little front kick to the knee. Look, see, they still both do it. Dominic Robinson feints the jab, and Kyler Prater does it right back. And a low kick. Inside kick is common with that switch kick. Takes a few seconds. He's back. Yeah, I don't believe that hit the cup area, but it did hit below the belt. Sometimes that just scares you a little bit, like, whoa. Yep. You have to think about it. Is this going to hurt in a minute? Sometimes yeah. you don't know those low blows until afterwards. You kind of take it. About Three seconds, seconds later, later, five seconds later, you fall on the ground. Aftershock. 
Good overhand right elbow by Carlos Prater as well. I don't know if it landed, but definitely showing the you know, technical ability of his striking and, you know, a wide array of strikes in his repertoire. Yeah, and showing his di dynamicness on the feet. It's not easy to throw those elbows standing up, you know, because that's one of those things you don't practice in the gym. You, you're not throwing elbows at your training partner, so it's something you do uh, you, you do on your own, you know, and with great instincts. And between two fighters, Eric Apple and Joseph Benavidez, we said repertoire and dynamicness in the period of 10 seconds. So don't believe the stereotype. We're not that dumb. <laughs> Referee bringing them back. I can even spell center. repertoire. Another. I know, I know what it starts with. <laughs> You know, and I'm waiting to see one of these guys you know, really, really take over the fight. Neither has thus far. All three rounds very, very close. Um, the only clear round, I think, was the third round where Carlos Prater won with the two takedowns. Nice oh, right hand. Very nice right hand. I think they have a tremendous amount of respect for each other, and one guy is waiting to get a, a nice punch in or to do something to hurt his opponent. It's not going to happen. Someone's going to have to just take control and force the issue. Nice takedown, nice takedown again, Carlos Prater. And, you know, Dominic Robinson would be, I think, best served to look to escape from the bottom and just get up. Yep. It's going to be very, very hard for him to, you know, secure any type of submission on Carlos Prater. That's the only thing separating these fighters right now is, uh, the, takedowns. is, is the takedowns. You know, but Dominic Robinson is doing a great job. You see he gets up on his, uh, on his hip there. He doesn't stay flat on his back. He tries to get up every time. That's what you got to do. Good hook there. And here at the end of the fourth round. Nice. Good action thus far. Good action. Very competitive fight, guys. That's why it's a championship fight. Got uh, the PFC thought would be the two best guys in here for the belt, and it's showing as a very competitive fight. Two guys who want it real bad, but Prouder seems to like he wants it just a little bit more. He's doing the extra things. Yeah. Yep, he made the sacrifice and cut the weight down there. You know, he did that for a reason. He's been along, he's been around here for a long time. He knows it's his chance. There's another takedown right there. We watched the replay. Check out the replay. Carlos Prater, good, solid right hand. And straight into the takedown, I believe, right here. Dominic Robinson showing his chin there. Uh, my boxing Round coach likes to call him Whiskers. Lightweight Championship. Hey, Carlos Prater feeling good. Cheering for himself, wants the crowd to get into it. He feels he's in control. He feels like he has the edge. And <laughs> and kind of Carlos off. Prater is his own cheerleader right now. He's ready to rock. I don't know what we're waiting for. I think we have too much Vaseline on top of the head where the cut is of Dominic Robinson. Fifth and final round here for the lightweight championship of the PFC here at PFC 13. Validation at the beautiful Tachi Palace Hotel and Casino. Once again, as always, your host, Eric Apple. I'm joined by none other than Andre Covington, as well as WEC Dream and PFC veteran Joseph Benavidez. Crowder comes right out and establishes a jab, and that's, that goes a long way with a guy who has some good boxing fundamentals. Talking about Robinson. Well, George Foreman always said that uh, having a good jab makes boxing easy. George Foreman also said having a grill in your house and <laughs> cook you a nice meal. I got one. <laughs> yes. Dominic Robinson is going to have to really press this last uh, few minutes of this fight. I need to get it out to the middle of the ring and throw some bombs because I, I have him behind in this fight. He's going to have to make something happen. You, know, and you never know the judges being this close to a fight. I think both guys need to go out there and push the pace in, the, push the pace in this fifth round yeah. and uh, re, you know, really separate themselves. Here's the thing. Uh, Car Carlos clearly won rounds three and four. The first two rounds could have been either way. And what? look at Carlos bring Dominic to his corner again. And the and takedown. And that's right there, as you said earlier, Joseph, is going to be the deciding factor, I feel, is the takedowns. Yep. He's had several of them. I, I can't recall Dominique having one takedown.
And unfortunately for Dominic Robinson, I think this third round is going to play out here on the ground. It's going to be tough for him to get back up here. Uh, Carlos has great wrestling, good control. He's won two rounds clearly, and uh, he's looking to take the third one. This uh, this be his third round that he's won clearly. Sorry. Dominic leaning over like he's looking for a Kimura or possibly a guillotine. But I think his best bet is to just escape, try to sit out. And, uh, you know, that's another smart move on Carlos, Pre Carlo Prater, because he knows the clock is still going. Now, I don't know why they didn't put him back down in the guard. Dominic Robinson really needs to go for broke right now. He needs to be, you know, shooting bombs out there, looking for the KO because at this point, I, you know, unfortunately for him, I think that's the only way he's going to win because he's lost two rounds decisively. Yeah, but he's in with a veteran fighter, a guy who's not going to set himself up. You can see his defense is real good. He's not allowing him to get position. He's throwing those leg kicks. He's doing everything that a, a veteran fighter would do not to get knocked out. Yep. Hands are high, elbows are in. He's got 10 seconds left before he takes home that lightweight championship here at the PFC. Nice trip takedown. Take Great yeah. wrestling for a Brazilian. You know, the only <laughs> other the only other Brazilian we know with such great wrestling happens to live in my house. His name's Renato <laughs> Babalu. <laughs> Carlos Prater, very excited as he should be. <laughs> Take a look at the replays, look at the trip. And just a great job by Carlos Pedro all the way around, you know, stymieing his, his opponent's effectiveness and his aggressiveness. You know, he controlled the clinch, kept the fight in his corner, both standing up and on the ground. Of course, our three judges are going to get their cards together. Those scores will be tallied and taken into our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy does have those results. We'll get the fighters in there with the referee. Let's throw it in to our ring announcer. His name is Jimmy Lennon Jr. with our winner and new belt holder. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. All three judges score them out the same, 49 to 46. All three in favor of the winner. And he is now the PFC World Lightweight Champion, Carlo Neo Prater. So Carlo Prater, no surprise, we felt he won at least three.